Hi everybody, welcome back to another technical demo around the Quarkus application. In this demo, I'm going to showcase how to make distribute tracing integration with open telemetry and for some less application based on Knable and Quarkus. But first of all, uh, before we getting started with the demo, let me try to talk a little bit about why we need open telemetry and how that matters. In the cloud network architecture, you got a bunch of application to deploy in Kubernetes or hybrid cloud, which uh, makes sometimes a variety of operational challenges, for example, how to solve availability and performance issue real quick. In order to solve those challenges, telemetry is a key role for the providing observability. Traditionally, telemetry data has been provided a lot of open source projects, but also commercial vendors. This is causing another standard issue. Telemetry enables to have a single and vendor agnostic solution, and this project also broad industry support and adoption for cloud provider, vendors, and users. And then you can also, in the end, for Java developer, Quarkus also integrate this capability open telemetry with one of the extension for your cloud and application deployment. And then moving forward to serverless architecture with event-driven application programming, a native one of the common popular projects to make your existing microservice application as serverless. With that, this video teaches how to trace your distributed microservice application, specifically serverless application with the Java framework. Let's get right into the demo, how it works. Okay, this is my uh, sample application based on Quarkus. I, I'm going to use the Quarkus race version. And here's the thing, the Quarkus uh, actually provides Open Telemetry Explorer extension. Just edit it, you can add using Able command line or Quarkus CLI, or you can just uh, select and download G5 from code.quarkus.io webpage. And then we're going to add the Quarkus OpenShift extension as well. In the end, we're going to deploy this application to OpenShift cluster for K-Neighbor service for serverless application. The sample application just a greeting resource to Java file to handle uh, RESTful API. As you can see, there are a simple application, hello, and then just print out log file, and as well as return text, hello, from less easy reactive. And one of the beauty of the Quarkus, you can actually use a reactive programming by default based on rest easy reactive extension. Right, I'm going to add a few more RESTful API uh, in this example uh, to trace this uh, application invocation from RESTful API. So I'm going to add a new pass Ola and return Ola Daniel, my name, and the same return text and the logo printout same. So let's try to add one more RESTful API here. Let's say the new pass is a greeting, and then uh, the method name is the same thing is greeting. Oh, here's maybe typo, but uh, just I'm going to greeting and then here's the return the hello, Quarkus Open Telemetry, and the welcome Quarkus and Open Telemetry, which is the same text result. So here's the application property, uh, how to define the Open Telemetry for tracing. So as you can see, uh, the application name, I'm going to say my service, and then I'm going to enable Open Telemetry feature, and also here's the Explorer endpoint. So here's the thing, Open Telemetry gathers all metric data from your source, for example, Quarkus application or even IoT Edge device, and then it will send it back to another tracing server, for example, Jaeger. We're going to use Jaeger in this example in local environment as well. So here is the localhost 4317 uh, Open Telemetry controller. We're going to run Open Telemetry server as a Docker container locally in a minute. So here's the Docker Compose file, how to a uh, stand up Jaeger server and uh, collect a based on open telemetry. As you can see, here's Docker Compose have the two, two container uh, specification. First container Jaeger tracing with the export ports here. And another one is open telemetry. And then it also exports a few ports here. And one of the GPC receiver and the 4317 port we just specified in a Quarkus application. You can also mount open telemetry collector configuration, which we can specify receiver and a process, explorer, and so on. So let's take a look at the, how to define open telemetry collector configuration here. So you can see uh, we're going to use a receiver by default OATP protocol for gRPC, and the other one is HTTP protocol, something like that. It's a similar concept, HTTP for OATP2 protocol. And the last thing uh, we're going to uh, 
specify the services based on receiver, processor, explorer, and so on. You can actually specify the receiver and extension and the services and explorer uh, based on your uh, backend aggregation server and tracing server. You can actually use a Zipkin server for the receiver, for example. Okay, so here's my local terminal window. Let's try to uh, run Docker Compose first to uh, start Jaeger server and open telemetry controller. So I'm going to use a Docker Compose command line and it will take some time uh, to run up just like that. And you can see uh, Jaeger server and then open telemetry controller just to, run, just to make sure uh, it's running. And then Docker PS showcases the open telemetry controller as well as uh, Jaeger server uh, running up on my local. Next thing, what I want to do is I'm going to try to access Jaeger web console uh, for my local. When you go to Jaeger UI, there's a no service at this moment. When you try to reload it, it instantly shows the one service so which is just a Jaeger query by default. Now I'm going to run my Quarkus application using Quarkus CLI. You can also use a Maven CLI or Gradle uh, as long as you're going to deploy a Gradle application. Okay, so Quarkus demo is running. The press W from the Quarkus runtime terminal, it automatically open landing page as you can see and visit the dev UI just for fun. Then when you go to uh, one of the extension here, open telemetry, still experimental feature, but it's worth uh, showcasing this demo at this moment. And then click on configuration in uh, one of the open telemetry extension, you can find all key and value. Uh, you can specify your application side to define open telemetry controller, which is really good. And then uh, I'm gonna reload my Jaeger console UI and you can see my application, which I to define my application portfolio file, my service is automatic startup. So this application and my service, and then you can operation all, and then there's no operation or when you define in my RESTful API. So let's go back to terminal window and then try to access our RESTful API. And then uh, switch another terminal window and then try to HTTP PI tool and access the hello. And it will return that's easy reactive. And then go back to Jaeger UI and refresh Jaeger UI and then go to operation. You can see new uh, RESTful API automatically detected, which means behind the scene, open telemetry automatically uh, detect the new trace telemetry data from the application. And then it was already sent to a uh, tracing server, which is Jaeger automatically it's happening. So when you a uh, little bit looking into my service, and then you can find uh, open telemetry actually uh, aggregate this telemetry data from my application. So let me try to call on the RESTful API and go back to Diego UI. What happened in the next? And uh, I'm going to try to ask a new RESTful API. Hola and a greeting. And you can see Ola Daniel and welcome uh, my text result. And then when you reload Diego UI, you can find another two. Let's put API operation here and then the same one trace and one trace because I just invoked one time. Let me try to call one more time for the Ola application and then you can see back to the Yego UI and then reload the Yego UI. You can find immediately uh, another trace just gathering into uh, Yego spaces, which is really cool. So now I'm going to try to deploy this application to Kubernetes, which is I'm going to use OpenShift Cluster for 10. Now here is a, I already created namespace, which is a project in OpenShift. As you can see, Quark says open telemetry. And then one of the good thing of uh, OpenShift cluster, it allows you to install open telemetry controller using operator. I already installed operator and also I already installed history tracing prep, which you already include Jaeger server. Okay, I already installed Open telemetry operator, that's why you can see the one part is showing up. And you go with the admin perspective and install the operator. There are a bunch of the operator, but you just need to focus on. Here, the distributing tracing platform, which he allows me to install and create a Jaeger server. And then the other one is OpenShift to distributed tracing data collection. So, in order to uh, deploy KNM services, and we need to actually install KNM service. 
uh, module in Edge Power Open Shift Serverless Operator. So one thing I needed to add the configuration here, I need to try to use a Zipkin server. In order to do that, I'm gonna try to trace in Zipkin server, which automatically detect uh, the tracing data when you new uh, KNB service is created. Okay, looks good. Now I'm gonna just uh, from my Zipkin server, which I'm gonna create in the end for Open Telemetry. So go to KNB serving namespace, and then create the KNB serving, and then just paste the dead YAML file. And if you go back to the developer console, you will see the bunch of the pod will uh, start. So as you can see, there are a bunch of the part uh, started. Uh, one of them is the own K enable or scalar part and the webhook and the HPA and so on. Okay, go back to our demo project. Then I'm gonna try to create a Jaeger server. Then I'm gonna just remove all default configuration, which is a uh, really comfortable Java developer. And it will get started in a minute. Then let's try to add a new open telemetry. Uh, Collector as well. So here is the uh, Open Telemetry Collector. A little bit different thing uh, between uh, Kubernetes version versus the local one. So as I mentioned earlier, I'm going to try to use Zipkin server uh, for the receiver. So that's why I bring the receiver as a Zipkin. And then Jaeger, which is the same thing, but only different thing is here. Uh, I'm going to set it up the right service name rather than just local host. In the inner local host, you can actually uh, skip the TLS termination, even which is not insecure for the demo environment and local, uh, which is uh, good enough for moving forward. But in production, I strongly recommend you have to set it up. TLS termination for secure your application. That's why I put in the TLS option. In the previous three, I set it up insecure, but in production environment, I'm going to set it up TLS as we did uh, the certificates file here. And then I go back to uh, OpenShift to Developer Console and then create the Open Telemetry Collector and then create that. Click on Create button and then paste all YAML file in this YAML view. And uh, everything is good. Here is once again uh, the right service name with the namespace and the receiver zip key and export Jaeger. And then once you create the button, and then it will uh, start in a second. Okay, looks good. So when you click on uh, the cluster collector or open telemetry, you can see the, the right rows on inside the pod. And now I'm going to add a few more operation here to deploy this application into. Push the cluster as a K never services. So, first of all, I'm going to specify a container image group, which is the same name of my project name or this name. And I'm going to push it, this containerized image to integrate Open Shift container registry and then the deploy through which, which means when you packaging this application using Quarka CLI or Maven camera, it will automatically deploy to a remote Kubernetes cluster, and the, which is your Kubernetes is. A native, so there are three options for developer. You can define the target for deployment. One is K native, and for just normal application part based on Kubernetes and OpenShift. And I'm gonna uh, make it uh, available router uh, to access the endpoint by external user, and I'm gonna use the uh, server server for X that uh, HTTPS protocol. Okay, so I'm gonna start my uh, demo. And then I'm going to deploy this application, including building. Using Quark as a build, I'm going to skip the test. And it takes a minute uh, to packaging the application. In the meantime, let's try to access the Jaeger server from my production environment from Open. When you click on the Open URL, it automatically integrates a single sign on from OpenShift user account, so which is really awesome. And when you go to Jaeger UI, you can see. There's no service at the very beginning, just like a user in the environment. Then when you load this Jaeger UI, it will automatically show the default one service Jaeger query, just like the uh, same thing in the local environment. Okay, let's uh, give us a moment and back to the terminal window. Behind the scene, it actually packaging uh, faster, like a Java, Java application artifact. And, they, and after that, 
Uh, it will package an application uh, using OpenShift S2 processor. You can actually use a Docker build storage as well. And in the end, it will push this containerized image into integrated OpenShift uh, container registry. You can also push it into external container you need. And then in the end, uh, OpenShift worker node pulls that image into available worker node. It's happening well, with just one single worker CLI command line, which is really good. And go back to uh, OpenShift topology view, you can see the new uh, application just started. And then this is a Quarkus application. Let's try to make uh, this hot icon with the Quarkus. So first of all, you can change the icon K native services to a function, which is a more explicit showcase than serverless application. And then you can uh, add application runtime uh, label to showcase this application is based on workers or uh, fancy way uh, to do that. And then when you go to Quarkus runtime logs, you can find uh, the Quarkus application running on JVM as a job file, and here's the Quarkus race version. And here is the open telemetry extension and REST React for React program, which is really good for some application. Okay, uh, just take a look at that. This is a pod name. So when you go back to uh, Jaeger UI and uh, just refresh, and it automatically detect a new service is just like a pod name. So the reason why you can see two different pods because when you change the revision name, it automatically restart another container. So that's why you can see two pod name here, which means the open telemetry automatically uh, gather that telemetry data from KNM service when KNM service is a uh, startup, and which is really good. So you don't need to set it up some specific uh, code in the application side to trace all telemetry. It's already down pause. So as you, when you go back to here, and then you can see uh, the application part and serverless application automatically scale down to zero, just like a default serverless behavior. I'm going to copy route URL and then go back to uh, terminal and try to access endpoint uh, for invoke the RESTful API and then just uh, make sure the relevant trace uh, detected by open telemetry and send it to the Jaeger server. Okay, so first of all, I'm going to try to access hello. And then you can see the Quarkus application automatically starts, just like a core start uh, strategy on the serverless technology. And then I try to access another desktop API, like Ola, and then uh, Kaburi. And the, the return result is exactly the same value we can see in my local. Now go back to Jaeger UI and then reload that thing and then open operation and you can see uh, three different operations you can see and then click on Yeg hello and you can see one trace because we just call one time and then here's the det detailed tracing data and telemetry data and then uh, go to Ola is a one thing. So let's try to call one more time Ola Lesper API and go back to Jaeger and then find that you got a two trace. So Im immediately you can uh, aggregate the data from open telemetry and back to the Jaeger server. And one time, and then you got three traces here. So let's go to greeting, and then you can see the, the call one more time greeting, and then just find trace. You have a two trace, which is really uh, happening simultaneously almost. When you click on greeting RESTful services, you can find the more detailed tracing and telemetry data, which is already came from multiple deployment because you can't service uh, keep up and down based on on-demand traffic. You can find more trace load into open telemetry collector pod. When you go back to develop console and then click on cluster collector pod in the view logs, you can find a bunch of the logs aggregating from the open telemetry collector. Thanks for watching. Have a good rest of the day.